Hey everyone and welcome to a new Football Manager experiment and today is the start of a spin-off series that I'm planning to do which will hopefully go on for a while and it's called Starting From Scratch and today is the first episode of Starting From Scratch and I will be using Manchester City. So the idea is I use the in-game editor which I've downloaded. I, I mean I can use the normal editor as well but I decided to use the in-game ed editor to remove all of the first team players from Manchester City and the manager. So if we go into the senior squad, no players. But they do have players in the under 21s. I kept those. Uh, we can't remove every single player. And maybe I can, maybe I can in future episodes. So what I want you to do, that your task for this episode, is to suggest teams in the comment section below that you would like me to do um, to start from scratch and holiday through the years and see how that team does if it completely destroys them sends them down to the conference or maybe they will be able to rebuild re rebuild themselves i suppose the obvious choice would be team like the rich teams to see what happens to them which is why i've chosen manchester city to start with now it doesn't have to just be one team per episode it can be two teams for example the obvious choice for that would be real madrid and Barcelona or Bayern Munich and Dortmund but anyway put your suggestions below and I'm very happy to do this to see what we do hopefully it'll be interesting um, if not then I won't be doing too many but hopefully you find this concept interesting and perhaps you will, you will want to play um, with some of these databases or saves that I, I create possibly I don't know um, but obviously Man City have the money to rebuild Will they in time for the start of the season? That's the first question. So I will holiday through to the end of the first transfer window. Now I'm planning to go 10 seasons into the future in total. Five in a bit more detail, then I'll fast forward five more after that. Um, and I think that's a good number of seasons to see how they do after having started from scratch. I've literally done nothing else to the team other than remove the players and the manager. So let's see who they get uh, to take over the duties of manager and who they bring into the squad. So here we go, 5th of September 2014. They've got Roberto Mancini back in charge. Crazy. And Keith Keane is their captain. What a legend. <laughs> He's come from um, Preston North End for 135k. So it doesn't bode well look, uh, from that initial out come of who their captain is their um, vice captain is actually a reserve player for Fana um, he's a decent player on the game but let's have a look at the transfers that they have made they have spent 5.26 million in total so they basically didn't spend much at all despite losing all their players now the most interesting thing I guess is seeing where the players went so we'll have a quick look Joe Hart still a free agent Caballero is also a free agent Sanya is at Seville. Mangala is at Arsenal. Bayata, free agent still. Nastasic is at Newcastle. Demichelis is at uh, Gladbach. Company has gone to Barcelona. Zabaleta is at Real Madrid. So some of these players are moving to massive teams. Clichy is at Everton. Kolarov is at PSG. Fernando is at West Ham. Fernandinho is at Man United. Yaya Torre is at Real Madrid. Ooh. Uh, James Milner is a free agent. Some of the English players have found teams. Scott Sinclair has found a team. He's at Aston Villa. Jesus Navas is at Real Madrid as well. Lots of players going to Real Madrid. David Silva is at Juventus. Samir Nasri is at... Oh, he's a free agent. Aguero has gone to Chelsea. Wow. Um, Jeco has gone to Liverpool. And then we're going into sort of the reserve players down there. So, um, the players coming into the team. Gazaniga from Southampton. They've actually spent money on all the players. No free agents there. Aidan White from Leeds. Tommy Smith from Huddersfield for 1.1 million. Uh, oh, he's a different Tommy Smith to the one I remember. Carl Bennett for 650k. Josh Brownhill for 1.7 million. Only 17. Must have 18, sorry. Must have a bit of potential to be worth that much. Curtis Obeng from Swansea. Keith Keane from Preston, of course. Bobby Grant from Blackpool, Scott Wagstaff from Bristol City, Lewis Ferguson from Doncaster, Joey Scars from Rotherham, Luke O'Neill from Burnley and Kevin Davies from Preston. So mainly League One lower pr championship players, couple from premiership teams, but they're, you know, reserve players. 
it's it's incredible. They've just not bothered restoring their team. Um, Richard Wright will be their main keeper because he was in the reserve, so I didn't delete him or remove him. So this is going to be interesting. They are currently bottom of the table, as you'd expect with that team after three games. Who will win the league? Um, you'd guess Chelsea, I guess. But anyway, we're going to holiday to the end of the January transfer window to see if they decide to restore some world-class players um, at that point. So here we are in January. They're still bottom of the pre or February. Sorry, start of February. They're bottom of the Premiership with 15 points. Looks like they're goners because, as you can see, not really any more significant signings at all. In came this guy. Uh, somehow they paid money from just by it being the end of the transfer window, and this guy coming in as well. Um, and John Eustace from Derby for pretty much nothing. He's 35 years old. What's going on there? So they've literally just decided to spend no money whatsoever, despite being rich, of course. Um, they're still rich. They've, I guess they've still got the same owners. If we go to staff, they've still got the same owners and chairman. Um, I didn't delete any of the staff apart from the manager. As you can see, the uh, manager is now Frank Reichard. He's in charge. So they sacked Mancini early on. And it doesn't look good. So it's the end of the first season. And as you can see, Man City did get relegated with 22 points, minus 40 goal difference. Top scorer is Charlie Austin, then Falco. Um, interesting. One matter, top average rating, and Urza with the most assists. Chelsea won the league in the end. Arsenal second, United and Liverpool. Swansea fifth. Uh, relegated with City was Stoke and Sunderland. So, some interesting findings there. Um, let's have a look at their players and who was top scorer. Top scorer was Jose Angel Pozo, this 19-year-old who is in the youth team. Then it was this guy. But average rating-wise, top was John Eustace. only played nine games. <laughs> 7.15 rating at the age of 35 with his nine games. It's just brilliant. Um, Tommy Smith, their highest rating player really that played any significant number of games and that was 6.61, it's an atrocious season for them as you would expect of that team though so will they be able to recover from this and get promoted back to the championship, uh, premiership sorry, from the championship will they spend money? that really is the key question uh, they, I mean, they've won very few games, they beat Hull, Palace, QPR, Everton they've run of three good games there, just sort of in January time, um, also beat Everton. And last game of the season, got a draw against West Ham. So I'm going to holiday to the end of the second season, see if they can get promoted from the ch championship. They need to spend money on championship quality players. They have the money to do so, it's just whether they do or not. So as you can see, Man City failed to get promoted from the championship. They finished third, so a bit unlucky. 78 points, not the best total um, f from a championship side. Um, and they failed in the playoffs. They, in fact, lost against Reading in the semi-final, which is disappointing, meaning they will spend another season in the championship. So, let's look a bit more in detail at their transfers. As you can see, they actually spent £37.9 million in the championship. That must be some sort of record, although they did sell £20 million worth of players simply because they sold Negredo eventually, who, of course, was on loan. So he wasn't in the team when I removed him. And then he went back to Man City and then was sold for 20 million. I think that was a already agreed anyway. So that 20 million may have helped them a bit. Although they have money anyway. So, they, I mean, they spent 17.9 million net, which is quite a lot for a championship team. But a lot of money on someone like Josh Murphy, who has real potential. But 12.75 million in the championship for one player is crazy. Of course, with the whole dynamic of championship football has changed recently with Rose going for 8 million. And also McCormack going for 11 million or something in real life. So, uh, yeah, lots of money being spent in the championship now. Liam Bridcut, big figure. Ailing's a good right back for a championship level. Um, also, Eduardo Vargas on a free. Good signing, for very good signing for the championship. Nathan Redmond, John Ruddy coming in to be their keeper. So, goals wise, top scorer was Vargas with 17. Average rating wise, with as you can see, the Oberfam and Martins they have as well. So it's a very interesting team, but they failed to get promoted. Guadetti as well uh, in the team. 
So, can they get promoted in the third season? Oh, we'll have a quick look at manager. Is Michelle now. So they've had three different managers. Possibly more, actually. Um, let's have a look. Yep, yeah, they've... Well, no, actually, that is their third manager. Interesting stuff. What will happen to Man City in the long run? Will they be destroyed by this? Oh, Mika Richards has come back. They've still got him. Because he was on loan, of course. But he's uh, had a bit of an injury by the looks of it, as usual. So, hmm. I will holiday it to the end of the third season and see what's happening. So, obviously, this is the first video of starting from scratch. So, if there's any sort of key information or key things you want to see that I miss out, please let me know for future reference. So, when I make more of these, I will know to show you that sort of thing. Um, but, obviously, this is just like a, a pilot episode, in a way, for this series decided to use Man City because they're a good team to start with, they've got so much money. So they managed to get promoted in the third season, successfully finishing first in the table, 92 points, very good total in the end. So they're back in the Premiership for the fourth season, going up with Leicester and Southampton. Um, let's have a look at the signings they made this time around. So they spent 75.5 million in the Championship, that is mental. Uh, not selling a huge amount, lots of players going out on loan as you can see so they've still got lots of young players and their youth academy is still in place, they've got amazing facilities of course so that's not going to change for a while but they've signed uh, Jonathan Vieira 7, 16 million, 18.5 million on this guy um, 19.5 million on this Ukrainian lad so lots and lots of money being spent on players, meaning they would surely get promoted. I mean, he spent 75 million in the championship. You should absolutely rip everyone apart. Uh, they didn't. They still lost eight games, in fact, in the championship. Top scorer Nathan Redmond. So they shared the goals around. No one really ran away with it in terms of goals. Uh, average rating wise, Iguina Mena, a left back, was the top rated player. John Ruddy is still their main keeper. So how will this team fare in the Premiership? I guess that's a big question. Let's have a look at who's won the Premiership the last two years. Man United and Liverpool won it this season. Everton second as well. It's Swansea, West Ham and Ipswich going down this year. Um, so, can they survive their first season back in the Premiership? Can they get top four? They're spending a lot of money, so they're spending money again. Uh, but it really is all about recovery from two seasons in the Championship. So, here we are. They managed to finish fourth in the Premiership. Very successful season. Very successful first season back in the Premiership with 66 points. I mean, it wasn't really anyone running away of it. Arsenal with 77 points won the title this season, which is good news for Arsenal fans watching. Finally winning again. But um, to finish fourth, first season back, very good. They've got Champions League, League football, which is fantastic for them. They've recovered. Um, by the looks of it and perhaps can go on to bigger and better things in the coming seasons we shall see unless it's just an anomaly maybe they've just had a very good first season back we, time will tell now in charge is Ronnie Della in charge of the club Mikarich is still captain um, it's turned into a, a big player for them really so it's actually done him a favour he's not really I don't think he's won any more England caps though John Ruddy's still their cap, uh, main keeper Goals-wise, top was Eduardo Vargas again. He's become a very big player for Manchester City. Um, and then Josh Murphy as well. He's probably developing very nicely. Got three caps for England now. So transfer-wise, this is what they did. They only spent two million, and yet they finished fourth. So they really prepared with, uh, with the previous season, spending 75 million. That prepared them enough to win that division and then go on and um, finish fourth in the Premiership, which is amazing, really. So, hardly any money spent um, this season. Maybe, um, obviously, there's these financial constraints nowadays, so perhaps they couldn't spend any more because of the previous season getting back up. Obviously, that was parachute payments helping as well, but you don't get £75 million pounds worth of parachute payments, of course, so that was some of their own money. So, will they spend more money next season to push on and win the league, or... Are they going to struggle now? Will the Champions League help them or hinder them? Let's see. 
So, not as such a successful season in their second season back in the top flight. They finished 10th, 55 points. Man United won the league at a Kansas, Newcastle and Forest in the top four. A Wigan 6th as well. Chelsea all the way down in 8th. West Ham surviving their first season back. But Stoke, Swansea and Hull going down. So that is interesting. Man City finishing down in 10th. We'll have to see how they did in the Champions League in a minute once we've looked at transfer history but they spent 74.7 million and finished 10th doesn't really make sense that does it at all spending a lot more money but finishing way down in 10th uh buying players like Keita for 38.5 million i don't even know how to pronounce this podgen paolo for a lot of money too um congolo by sam byram coming from tottenham he must have left Leeds for Tottenham, didn't really play, but played for City. Ah, this guy, good player. Uh, a few million for him. And John Flanagan, coming from Chelsea, so he went to Chelsea. Oh, he's been everywhere. He's 10 million to Southampton, 10.75 to Chelsea, and then 3.7 to Man City. Three caps for England so far. So, um, and lots of players going out on loan. few players being sold, but not a huge amount. So... Now Rafa Benitez is in charge. Their captain is this guy, Nesta Aregio, Mexican. Champions League-wise, they were in Group C. So Real Madrid, Chelsea and Barcelona have... Chelsea, oh wait, let's go from the start. Chelsea, Real Madrid, Chelsea, Barcelona. And the final of the one that's just about to start is between Moscow and PSG. So we'll have a look at that in the next um, instalment, which will be... It's, Season 10, in fact, because I'm going to holiday for five seasons. But um, Man City, where did they get? They managed to get to the first knockout round, but were defeated by Real Madrid, unfortunately, in that first knockout round. 5-0 um, on aggregate, not so good. So, a bit unfortunate for them. Did they win anything else? Did they manage to... Fourth round of the FA Cup, lost against Burnley. League Cup, don't think they really got anywhere by the looks of it. Capital One Cup, they lost against Bristol City in the fourth round. So not a very good season for Man City. But I'm going to holiday five more years now. And we'll see if they you know, become a, a mid-table team. That initial destruction of the squad seems to have had a long-term effect. Although they did finish fourth last season, of course. Tenth this season is not very good with the amount of money they spent. So will that have a long-term impact on the team or will they be able to recover and become a big force again so we're in the year 2024 Antonio Conte is in charge and they've had only one manager more since that time Benitez left in 2020 and since then Conte has been in charge Javi Martinez is the captain at the age of 35 with Keita the uh, vice captain so since that 10th place finish, they finished 6th, 14th, 6th, 9th. And this season they finished 4th again. So it's been topsy-turvy for them. But this is the first time since that first season back in the Premiership they, that they've managed to get Champions League football, finishing on 65 points. So I'm ending it here because I think 10 seasons is enough to go into the future. But it looks like they've turned into a bit of a topsy-turvy team. Perhaps they'll make a recovery in the future, but I, I think 10 seasons in, you can't really say the initial thing has a great impact after that. There'll be other circumstances that have arise. Obviously, it's a completely different team to what originally started 10 seasons ago, but they've got the money to recover. They just haven't maybe spent it in the right places. They've got some good players. They've got Mooney and um, they've got a lot of regens that will be very good players There's Zulu a good centre back they've got Byram Ruddy's still their main keeper at the age of 37 he's got 18 caps for England top goal scorer the season just gone was Belhad who's a regen and Keita Mounian also playing very well for them so there you go guys that's what happens when you start from scratch with Man City and completely murder their team um, Chelsea have won on it the last two years Man United Won it twice before that, and Arsenal as well. Uh, we'll have a quick look at the Champions League. It was, in fact, PSG that won that final. But then, four years of dominance from Man United. And then Juventus. So, Man City failing may have had some sort of impact on Manchester as a whole, and allowed 
Man United to dominate the city and dominate the world because, I mean, they even lost the final just gone. They've been in five finals in a row and won four of them. That is incredible. Uh, their manager is this guy, uh, Slutsky, and their team, I mean, Yanezai must be pretty immense. Yeah, he is. So uh, that's interesting. Uh, Dylan Stevens is a regen, I presume. Looks very, very good. So, strangely enough, it's allowed Manchester United to really dominate. Chelsea also have done very well in the league. Um, I don't know, maybe that has had some sort of impact on them, but can't really tell. But that's, I think that's an interesting experiment. So, their, oh, their reputation has gone down to four and their finances have gone down to secure, which is interesting. So perhaps it did, in fact, have more of an impact than we realise. And they have sold... That is really important. Um, I, Irish owners now, in fact. So that is huge news. But they still managed to finish fourth this season. And finances-wise, they've not spent a huge amount, have they, since... I mean, they spent seven... Lots of money for a while. So 82.7, 19 million, 74. Suddenly, it all goes... They sell up. They had enough. The owners had enough. That is the biggest news. They've managed to get fourth this season, but I don't think that would be a long-term thing for them. Now that they don't have that huge money behind them, they've got good players, but they don't have those owners, and I think that is the most important factor. The owners had enough of not winning anything, and they left. And I think that's the biggest conclusion that we can take from this, that because we destroyed them initially, they didn't fully recover. They never fully recovered. They haven't won anything. I think I checked competitions-wise. I don't think they won anything since, apart from the championship. And they left, and that has left them barren. Um, obviously, fourth place, like I said, but I can't see it lasting. So there we go, guys. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like. Please leave your suggestions in the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. That would be much appreciated. And I look forward to hearing your thoughts about this video and future videos. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode of Starting From Scratch.